Hey guys, welcome back to another installment of our Valo Daybell case coverage. Today we're going to address a couple of things, things that have happened or come to light in the last 24 hours. First, I want to address rumors. There are a lot of rumors swirling around, and we knew this was going to happen. Um, some of them are very intriguing, I have to admit. But I'm not going to bring them to you until I have confirmation or verified sources for any of it. However, I really want to talk about them. So maybe we'll do a Friday night live stream or something or Saturday afternoon. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you'd like to do a live stream where we can just sit and talk about the rumors, you guys can come on panel if you want. We can do all that stuff. I really would like to dig into some of these rumors. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. But now moving on to the facts as we know them. The first thing that I want to bring to you is Mark, not Mark Means. We're not talking about Mark Means. We are talking about John Pryor, Chad Daybell's new attorney that we saw for the first time in the courtroom the other day at Chad's hearing. In 2012, John Pryor was indicted by a grand jury for felony battery with intent to commit rape after being accused of attacking a 19-year-old girl who said that she came to his office in Nampa because she was looking for a job, but she was also looking for some advice on a child custody case. So this guy, he was faced with a maximum 20-year prison sentence if he had been found guilty of felony battery. Uh, now, she says that he forced himself on her in his law office conference room. Right? But of course, he denies it. He said that she was a prostitute and he was going to give her money for it. She denies that, so whatever. But instead of going to trial and being possibly sentenced to 20 years in jail, he pled down. He pled to a lower offense so that he could skip that long risk of a prison sentence. So what he ended up getting was six months in jail and a $1,000 fine when he was sentenced in November in 2012 in Canyon County. There you go. That's Chad Daybell's attorney. Are we really surprised? Anyway, that's the news on John Pryor. There's some images on your screen. I will put links to some of the news articles in the Discord channel so you can read up on it if you want to or just Google it. It's, it's everywhere. The next thing I want to talk about, and this is kind of a curious thing. Let's talk about Christopher. This is Christopher Perret. Christopher is, <laughs> I think he was actual friends with Chad Daybell. I'm assuming that they met. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. But he was one of the most vocal and avid supporters of Chad Daybell up until yesterday. He has a lot of posts on his forum. Now, there's a forum that was started by some other guy, but Chris kind of sort of took it over, uh, called LDS Avow. Now, if you follow Denise's channel, you will know what this group is. Um, if not, go ahead and Google it. Um, you cannot log into their forums and read the posts unless you pay a fee. All right, so bear in mind, you know, there's that. There's some screenshots that are coming up that you can blow up and look at. I'll post some images in Discord of things that have been found. They're a branch of LDS, kind of like Chad and Lori were. They have a lot of the same tenets and ideas and all that kind of stuff. And they're big preppers, big time preppers. There are whole sections on their forums about defense and camping and, you know, stockpiling and storage. Now, being a prepper doesn't automatically make you a bad person, my idea. I think prepping is probably a smart idea, especially in light of what we've seen this year. You know, you got to give the prepper some credit there. Now, Chris Perrette's point of view was that the grandma, as he called her, which he's referring to Kay, uh, which is JJ's grandmother, is somehow responsible for the missing kids because she's greedy and she just wants all the money. And Chad and Lori were just hiding the kids so she couldn't get them. That was his, you know, the, the theory that he put forth. And recently he had a post saying he's been vindicated. He talked to Chad and he knows their whole story. And it's all going to come out and everyone's going to see that he was right and Chad was right. And it's this evil grandma behind all of it. And he pushed that pretty hard. However, in light of recent events, Mr. Parrott was forced to kind of do a pretty swift backpedaling. Now, he has a post, and you're going to see it on the screen, where he basically said, Um, oh, my wife and I were, were victims of Chad and Lori. We, we were hoodwinked, huh? I'm going to have to eat crow. 
It's like, you know, no, dude. You went for it, you ran with it, you dove in 100%, and now you're just trying to save face. But I don't believe what he's saying. I don't think he's sorry for what he said at all. I think he just had to try and save face because, like Chad, Mr. Parrot here is one of these types of authors. Chad Parrot has an extensive library on Amazon, and it's a very common theme with this group that they're all about their dreams. Their dreams are actually prophetic visions. They're not just dreams. And so they post about their dreams, they dissect them, they talk about them, they write books about them as if they're the next Nostradamus. And, you know, their dream means this is going to happen. So get ready, folks. So, you know, if you're interested, there's a picture on the screen of Chris Perrette's Amazon page. So you can go check out some great literature. You can go to the Avow website. The last I looked this afternoon, it is still active, though you do have to pay to be able to read the post. So. Well, Fox News, they were going to be doing an interview with him. They billed it all day. And I waited all day. There was no interview. The reporter just stood outside the door and talked about him and just talked about his new statement that is publicly available anyway. So I was mad because it interrupted my viewing of Paul's live stream tonight. But anyway, clearly you know how I feel about this guy. Just another one of these weird, slimy characters in Chad and Lori's orbit. So that's that. Uh, if you want more information on Avow, please check out Denise Rainey's channel. There should be a link in the iCard popping up right about now. You know, she'll have some good information for you there. It's a group that I'm trying to avoid, so I don't really want to draw their attention here because I read their forums and they're pretty scary. So, okay. The last thing that I want to talk about tonight, and as of all of these topics, this is the most important one. The family of Tammy Daybell has issued a public statement. Now, remember, Tammy Daybell was married to Chad Daybell. She died in her sleep on October 19th of 2019. Two weeks later, Chad flew to Hawaii and married Lori. Remember, this is October 19th. Tammy Daybell was alive when the children had already been gone for at least a couple of weeks. So keep all that in your head as you're remembering these thoughts from her family. As the family of our beloved Tammy, we want to extend our deepest and heartfelt love and sympathy to the families of Tylee and JJ. We share the pain of the tremendous and shocking loss you are enduring. We still suffer and we will suffer with you for many years to come. Please know we will continue our prayers to strengthen your families as you are finally able to properly lay to rest your precious Tylee and JJ. As matters move through the judicial process, we pray that each of our families can be strengthened and trust that justice will be swiftly served. We wish to thank the many members of law enforcement and the FBI who continue to work tirelessly as investigations continue and the public who have shown such love and support for our families. We also ask that our privacy continue to be respected at this time as we continue to grieve for Tammy and the Woodcock and Ryan families grieve this unfathomable loss. So that is a statement from Tammy Daybell's family. Remember, they didn't lose her all that long ago. This was October of last year, and her death is still under investigation. Her body was exhumed on December 11th of 2019. And as a result of that, law enforcement were able to obtain a search warrant for their property where Chad and Tammy lived. And they searched that back in January. This is the same property they searched the other day. They removed 43 pieces of evidence from that property, but it's all under seal, so we have no idea what the search warrant said or what they retrieved. Also, many people are asking, well, if they searched there in January, why didn't they find the kids then? Remember, this is January in Idaho. That ground was frozen solid. You can see from the images there was a foot of snow on the ground. They wouldn't have seen anything. So as a result of that search, in April of this year, Law enforcement came out and issued a statement saying that the investigation into Tammy Daybell's death has taken a turn. They are now looking at Chad and Lori and looking at them through the lens of attempted murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and murder. So, the results of her autopsy have not been formally released yet, but what they have found between her autopsy and the search of the home gave them enough information to start looking at Chad and Lori as being responsible for her death. 
So that is still in the works. They have not given up on that. They're still working on it. And we're probably not going to hear anything about it until their investigation is done. But just know it is happening. And this family wants justice for Tammy. And we want justice for all of them. For Tammy, for Charles, for Joseph, and especially for Tylee and JJ. So that's all the news that is fit to print right now. I'll be back with you again live if any breaking news happens. And hopefully another update tomorrow if some more information comes out today. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. And if you want to be notified whenever I go live, if there's breaking news or press conferences, hit that notification bell and you'll get a notification on your phone and you'll be able to join in. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.